I know many people might think it's kind of early to listen to Christmas songs and maybe even some of you don't really believe in listening to the Christmas songs or celebrating but I don't celebrate Christmas like most people would celebrate I think of it I think of it more having concerning Jesus and I was listening to songs and uh, <laughs> but maybe I'm kind of silly here and nostalgic and stuff but songs I used to listen to was old school songs you know like Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra and uh, like Deborah Lee anyways old school songs like you know uh, uh, rocking around the Christmas tree and and uh, okay a really old one that most people probably don't even know who he is but ones I could remember from when I was little that I listened to and it makes me think of Christmas with my dad was uh, listening to old Burl Ives songs and um, there was one that I vaguely remember it from way back when and I actually found it on YouTube and um, listened to it again and it really made me think of my dad and kind of made me a little weepy eyed and it was one called Happy Birthday Jesus Christmas Prayer by Burl Lives and it tells the story of Jesus and how this little girl her dad was telling her about Jesus and um you know, from his birth all the way up to the resurrection. And, uh, that her, like her, the ending part was more like a her little prayer that, that she hoped she wasn't too late to say happy birthday, Jesus. And it got me, it really got me. And, um, that's what I think of when I think of Christmas. I don't, I don't think of most of the stuff. I mean, I did when I was little at first, you know, before I really knew the true meaning of Christmas. I, I was thinking about the presents and you know, uh, Santa Claus and things like that. But not later on when I, when I, well, I did know the story sort of, but I kind of thought, I thought more like. Um, Kind of, kind of like together. I did, I didn't know then at that time, and something that um, made me think of from my childhood too. That uh, something that I could remember. I don't know if anybody remembers this, but I could remember my dad that he had this like booth that he had in the kitchen, and. Um, <laughs> with this really awkward, weird table around it. And he used to have an old um, eight track player that he'd have plugged in by the back of the booth that was in the kitchen. And um, he actually had eight track tapes that had like a lot of the old school songs and stuff on. And it, it kind of listening to these songs kind of reminded me of that back then when I was young and growing up and you know getting up and smelling hot cocoa and you know and having pancakes in the morning and sitting around talking with my dad and I really miss those times I really do my dad's unable to do that now he he's in a home right now and um his memory kind of comes and goes, so he doesn't remember a lot when I share some of the old memories with him. And, um, I really miss, I don't know, it probably sounds silly, but I remember and miss going fishing with my dad, and <laughs> we used to go to El Casco Lake. And there was one, there was one silly memory. We were, we were staying overnight camping at, at the lake. And, uh, 
he was teaching me how to fish and I was real squeamish about putting the bait on the hook and things like that, but I did it. You know, I was somewhat of a tomboy, I guess you could say, but I love to fish and I love to go camping and hiking and things like that with my dad because my dad's the one that took us to go do that. My mom never did that. And those are some of the memories I have with my dad. And I remember going to a local lake. I remember going to uh, a lake that now uh, that's close by that they have like a big uh, area that they have concerts and things at now. It's quite different than it used to be. And they used to have paddle boats and all kinds of things. But anyways, at El Casco Lake, I remember going there and that night... Uh, that we stayed over. They had like a little store there and you could go and, and we roasted marshmallows and made s'mores and uh, we had what's called a burning barrel. I don't know if anybody knows what a burning barrel is, but it's like, uh, kind of like you take a 50 gallon barrel and they cut it in half so that, uh, you can make these like little handles on it and you make sure it's cleaned out real good so it doesn't have anything toxic or anything when you go to, um, burn stuff in it and it's like a portable fire for um fishing and uh <laughs> we would take wood stocked up in this and everything and then we'd take it out and burn all so, so much in there it'd keep us warm all night and um he uh <laughs> when he was showing me on the fishing there was tons of trout and catfish in this lake and catfish is what you mostly caught but they also had bullfrogs there and some of the people would actually go hunting for bullfrogs and you could hear them at night uh and actually i slept better probably there listening to the bullfrogs and the fish going when they're like uh trying to eat stuff in the water and you'd hear the the um the dragonflies you know as they'd hit certain things and flying by and it just if anybody's ever been near a lake or a river or a stream or anything the different noises that you hear and the water you know it's just it's unlike anything else and <laughs> I'd fish with him and he'd show me how to fish and I was uh, not sitting in a uh, fold-up chair at the time. I was sitting like on the edge of the, uh, the bank of the lake and my dad used to tell me this story about like, uh, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what he said, but anyways, it was this really, really old catfish in the lake. They kind of called the grandpa catfish and it was kind of a white gray color and many, many people tried to catch it. Every time anybody, anybody would get this catfish on their line, they never got it completely in. It would act like, you know, it would fight you. And you'd go to get it reeled in and it seemed like, you know, the fight was all gone out of it and everything. And so you'd kind of relax and everything. And I guess it was fooling you or something anyways. But nobody end, ended up ever catching it. Everybody always tried to catch this fish and never could catch this fish. So I'm sitting on the edge of the bank of this lake. And I've got shorts on and, and tank top and everything because this, this is in the middle of summer. And <laughs> I get this fish on my line and it's a pretty strong fish. And so I start hollering for my dad to help me and everything because it's pretty strong. It feels like I'm getting pulled toward the lake by my pole. And so I'm kind of sliding everything and I have, uh, I don't know what anybody, if anybody knows what this means, kind of thongs. They're like, like uh, the chunk, uh, some people call them chonclas. Some people call them sandals, like uh, rubber sandals. But anyways, they're like, uh, I called them thongs. That's what I call them, flip-flops, thongs, um, 
chanclas, whatever you want to call them. Anyways, I had some of those on too. And I couldn't get any traction to kind of hold myself from like sliding toward the bank and almost landing in the water. And so my dad was helping me <laughs> to try to reel this fish in. And I kid you not, scared me so bad. This fish, I don't know, maybe maybe this was just what it did or whatever. Scared me so bad. I was reeling this fish in and I kid you not, it looked like this fish being on my line kind of turned around the other way and was going across the top part of the water toward the bank of the lake directly at me. And mind you, I'm sitting on the bank of this lake. So I'm almost eye level seeing this thing, huge looking fish. And it's a white gray color. It's coming toward the shore right at me. I'm a little kid, so I'm thinking this thing's going to try to eat me or something. <laughs> I got so scared, I dropped my fishing pole. <laughs> and my dad lunged and fell kind of like forward to grab the fishing pole. But just enough slack was on that line because I had dropped it that the fish was no longer on the hook. Okay, and this white gray look, I don't, I don't know if it was the grandpa catfish that got away from me or if it was another one and I just hearing that story and that's what I thought it was and everything and it just, it just looked like it. I don't know, but the fish got away and my dad kind of laughed at me a little bit and he was like, what'd you drop the pole for? And I said, it was coming toward the shore and it was going to eat me. And he was busting up laughing. And of course, my brother made fun of me and would not let me live it down. I dropped the fishing pole and let the, the grandpa catfish get away. That's what he kept saying all the time. And I just told him, oh, oh shut up. You know, just quit teasing me. But he went on and on and on for a long time. Probably at least six months or a little bit more maybe teasing me that I let that fish get away. And if it was him, he wouldn't have did that. He would have held on to it. He would have caught that fish and reeled it in and we would have had catfish. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, mm -hmm, sure, if you would have been in my spot and sitting down like you were and everything, you would have got scared too and dropped the pole. So don't even lie. <laughs> but that... I don't know why thinking of that particular memory, maybe because of the nostalgia and I missed my dad and the things we used to do. And I used to sit and do puzzles with them and huh, we'd watch old movies and like watch uh, westerns and like uh, the Lone Ranger and there's just so many old shows and stuff we used to watch together and like the old Lucy show and I love Lucy and so many other things that he would actually just sit down and we'd watch stuff together and he'd spend time with us like that. And <laughs> I miss that. I really do miss that because we used to have this like really comfy chair, like really, really wide comfy chair <laughs> that he would sit in and there was just enough room for me to sit in the chair next to him. So I could, you know, put my arms around and hug my dad while we were watching a movie. And I really miss that. I mean, I couldn't do it now. I'm all grown up and everything and that and there's no way we would put fit in something like that. But I mean, it would be kind of good to be able to do that with him or just talk to him or, do a puzzle and stuff again. And I know someday, you know, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe when we get to heaven, we'll be able to do that again. But I really do, I really, really do miss my dad. And I just wanted to share that, that <laughs> how listening to, even though it's early, it's not even 
Thanksgiving or anything yet that I was kind of like listening to some Christmas songs and come across Burl Ives songs and it really really made me think about my dad and then about the <laughs> the fish that got away at the lake but yeah um anybody out there that misses someone in their family and everything too or you know maybe doesn't get to spend the time that they need to or want to with them anymore because either they're here and they're unable to spend the time with them or that they've gone on already and you know just waiting for that time to be reunited with them again uh, I have many many that I'll be reunited with once get to heaven and I am looking forward to it but yet I enjoy the time here with my family also and sharing parts of my life with other people that maybe might spark a little bit of some good memories for them or maybe something even related to going to church or or something with their family some of the good memories you know or just I don't know I mean I used to think long long time ago that as long as you were good you would go to heaven and you know as long as you weren't didn't do nothing really really bad you would go to heaven later on I've learned that it, there's a lot more to it than that and even good people, if they don't know and accept Christ, that they don't go to heaven. Uh, I didn't know all that. I didn't know the complexity of, um, well, not really complexity, but I didn't know that there was more to it instead of just being good or being bad, you know. Uh, there's more to it. And I didn't know all of that. Later on, I come to understand that. And... Um, not that the gospel is uh, hard or anything to be saved, because it's not. It's easy. But um, man is made in some ways it complicated and added many things to it to make it almost sound unattainable. And I, I myself was caught up in that for years and years too, because I never thought I was good enough, you know... I mean, I knew I had come to Christ and believed and everything, and I just, I had this, well, they say I have to do this, 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 and to be saved. Okay, well, I did and confessed and, you know, uh, admitted, you know, I needed him and asked him into my life and, and I had washed in his blood of my sins. And then they add all this other stuff that I had to do that I had to, you know, be water baptized and I had to this and I had to that and uh, that you have to do this to stay saved. And, and I was like, okay, well, it, it made it very complicated for me. It really did. It, it, okay, well, I thought you said this and I'm saved, but now you're saying I have to do this, this, this too to be saved. Because I wasn't really completely saved. And that I have to keep doing this and this and this to remain saved. And that's not what you told me at first. And so it was really confusing. And of course, many of them, when you ask questions about it or, or you try to, okay, well, I don't understand. Can you explain it to me? Many of them got upset because I asked questions and so uh, I knew that I loved God and I loved Jesus and I knew that I was saved because I would feel the spirit whenever I would do something that maybe wasn't exactly like he would like like me to do and maybe I wasn't doing everything that uh he had purposed for me I would I would feel that uh correction 
not in a bad way, but like a, um, uh, like a father would correct you. It's not a punishment per se correction, but, a that that's not good for you if you do that, you know, and you need to do this, you know, you know, you don't need to be like, okay, smoking or you don't need to be going and hanging around with those people because they're going to be doing something bad that will harm you you know that kind of stuff that was more like that type of a correction it wasn't a stern like uh better you know better do this or do as i say or else it was more of a uh, gentle correction that I knew he meant it that I shouldn't do it but you know how like I don't know maybe it was just me uh, when you're growing up you okay well you think that your parent is kind of like it just doesn't want you to have fun or whatever and well you know that happened to you that's not going to happen to me if I do that you know, I know better and this and that and everything. That's the kind of uh, mentality I had like as a teenager and that, well, you know, you're telling me this, but I'm not going to do that. I know better than to do that. I'm not going to fall into that. I'm not going to, you know, do that. You did that and everything, but I'm not going to do something like that. But, you know, many of the things I did actually end up doing or going somewhere where I shouldn't or not telling the whole truth to my mom when I went to go somewhere. She didn't want me to go, things like that. And I got <clears throat> a, a, a a soft, you know, correction for it uh, that, you know, you shouldn't be doing this and everything. You know that you're going to end up getting in trouble and, you know, you're going to make your mom worried and things like that. That was my correction. Those Those kinds of things were my correction. And... I didn't realize that that was uh, per se that, I guess, at the time, but it was, and I didn't understand it completely because I didn't, uh, I didn't. I knew by hearing what they were telling me, scripture-wise, but I didn't go into the scriptures and see all myself, and I listened more what they said, didn't really look, okay, was that exactly the truth, and are they telling me all, okay, do I need to read a little bit more of this or whatever, I was what was called at that time, I guess you could say, kind of a Sunday Christian where that was pretty much one of the only times I picked up my Bible and that and listening to the sermon and thing. I actually take notes, you know, on the scriptures they do. And so I'm listening to the sermon now and I write down the scriptures as they're, as they're being told also. And you know, when you're having the sermon, you don't really have the time to look up those specific scriptures right then, but you can, um, look them up later and uh, pray about them and, and do a little bit more uh, study on them when you get home because you can't really do it there's only a certain amount of time in the sermon and everything so you just bit or at least I do I write them down and then I re go over them again later on and uh, read them in my quiet time that I uh, have after church and oh okay so i see what they were saying okay that makes sense and then you know you know and then i look and then even sometimes there's more uh as i read it that i get out of it also so yeah i have learned over time and um a lot of things uh have I have a greater understanding of them now I'm still learning even to this day 
because I know I don't know everything on it and I don't claim to know everything, but I really, really do want to know and I really, really do want to understand all of it. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we will understand it all. Maybe we won't. I honestly, I don't think that we'll completely understand everything before our time. Maybe we will, maybe we won't, but I, I don't think so. We might have a good knowledge of it and, and what the scriptures mean and everything. And through prayer and revelation through that prayer that's given, uh, that is revealed to us as we, you know, uh, uh, study and it, it, it's, I've heard, I've heard other people say this too, and it's true that you can read the Bible from cover to cover, but when you read it again, even there's still things that you will see that you didn't see the first time you read it. And I don't care how many times you've read a scripture, you're still going to see something new in that scripture or in the context of it or something as it's relating to something because we're not exactly the same every single day. We go through different things and certain, um, <laughs> certain, um, Certain scriptures, they apply to, uh, they're all, the, all the scriptures for us, okay? Not all the scriptures about us, okay? It's about different, different things. There's a lot of historical stuff in there. There's a lot of things that pertain to prophecy and different things, okay? But still, as we go through our faith walk and in life, Sometimes the spirit will prompt a certain scripture to my mind, at least, and I will read it. And it is exactly what I have asked for or uh, something that I didn't understand. And maybe that scripture and then in the little note parts that that's here, um, you'll have another like a uh, scripture that kind of is the same or relates to and I'll also go and look at that one usually also which if I read the initial scripture and looked at and I understood it but it um, it was it was understanding but it wasn't a a total complete understanding when I go to the other one that's in the little footnotes Usually that scripture, it's type the same, maybe a, similar to the subject matter that 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 scripture that I was drawn to was, and it makes both scriptures. Uh, it make it makes a different. Uh, it it reveals a different deeper understanding to both of them being being together since they're so similar it it gives a greater understanding it, it it does i don't know if this happens to anyone else it but it does to me and um <laughs> no matter how many times i read something it still amazes me it really does and the Bible was inspired by God and written by man, yes, but it was inspired by God. It's the Word of God, and it is alive. The Word of God is alive. It has so much meaning to it and such a deepness to it that there are layers to it, and no matter how many times you read it, there's another layer that is revealed to you. It really is. And it still amazes me. It really does. It still amazes me. And I am so thankful. So thankful. 
that Jesus died for me to save me and the spirit dwells and is there to help guide and reveal things to me and show me so that I can understand God's word more greater than anything and I love all my brothers and sisters in Christ and I even love those that are lost that are trying to struggle and want to be saved and maybe haven't made that decision I still love them because they are God's creation and a lot of people maybe don't understand that because at times, whenever I see, I see them as the potential of what God could have with them when they realize that he died for them and that he loves them so much. And when they realize that and they come to Christ and they realize how much he loves them and there's, they accept him and they are saved, it is so, so joyous. And I am so happy for even just one more that has come to Christ. And one more to praise his name. <sighs> and it is so glorious. And I know that the angels in heaven praise, praise that when someone comes to God. <sighs> I know they do. <sighs> it's... It makes, it makes me so happy. It makes my heart happy and filled with joy. It really does. It is so glorious. God is so good. He desires everyone to be saved. They won't all be saved. I know that. I'm not so foolish to, to not understand that some won't accept him, but he still wants them to be. He desires them to be. He wants all his children saved, but he's not going to beg them and he's not going to plead with them to come to him. We give the word, we give what we are told, and we share. They have to decide whether they choose to accept it. We just plant the seed and God waters it. The increase comes from him, not us. We just plant the seed. The increase comes when they accept. It does. It really does. And we're running out of time. We're running out of time before this age ends. We don't have very long at all. And it makes me so very, very happy that soon we will go home to be with Jesus. But yet at the same time, it makes me sad too for all the people that don't accept because it's going to be so much harder for them if they're left. And I hope and pray all the seeds that are planted if they don't accept him before rapture happens that they really, really think and contemplate about it afterwards. And they come to him but they need to understand that the price they are going to pay will be so, so high. 
it would be so wonderful if they accept him now and come to him before the rapture. But many won't. I know that. Many won't. <sighs> but I pray that those that are left that don't make that decision right before rapture and have heard they realize and they stay strong and help bring others to Christ show the right way to the others too as there will be others that will be saved during the tribulation but their price will be very very high they just have to stand strong and remain in him no matter what hard hard horrible things come at them and don't compromise and don't give in and don't take the mark if they do all is lost so they need a good basis and they need to stand strong. So that time is almost here. But enough with, I'm trying not to be melancholy about it and maybe it seems harsh to some people, but it's the truth. If you have heard how much Christ loves you and how he desires you to come to him and you still are unsure, please, please think long and hard about it. Think, think long and hard about it before you say no don't completely say no think about it don't turn away don't turn away from God accept Jesus before the time is up and this age ends it would be a lot easier if you accept now and come to him. It's not going to be a perfect life because there will be people that still come at you, but it's going to be so much harder and so much harsher after rapture happens and people are wondering why all the people left. Where did they go? And you're left here. It's going to be horrible. It might not seem like it at first. And there will be a lot of confusion and people trying to speculate what has happened and offering all kinds of excuses. But most excuses, or in fact, probably all of the excuses, unless they know about God and they just didn't accept most of the excuses or all of the excuses that they give are not going to be true. They're not going to be right. And they're going to lead you down the wrong path. So um, I pray that you listen and you heed this before that time comes. And if you have any comments or any uh, words of encouragement or maybe even want to share a little bit of something that happened experience you've had similar anything like that you want to share in the comments below or just uh, maybe uh, want to uh, know something else in particular if I know it I'll give the information if not I can point you in the right direction um, I'm still learning myself. I am glad to have any that listen. And I'm going to go ahead and say good night. And God bless. And if I don't see you, uh, well, if I don't, 
have another video after this and we all <laughs> we all will see each other in heaven all those that belong to Christ will see each other in heaven and um, so I pray that you really listen to this and heed God's word you won't know God's word if you don't look and you don't read it. If you have trouble reading and you have a very, very good version on audio that is accurate to the word, listen to it on audio. It does make a bigger impact if you read the word yourself, but if you have the inability to read it or... Uh, you just want to listen to the audio maybe in your sleep or uh, in a few minutes here and there that you have and everything that's what you have at first do it get the word get it in you hear it it it's also good to read it but if that's what you can do just hear it on audio get it on audio and listen to it if that's all that you can do at this moment but please, please hear it, read it, whatever works for you so that you can get the word, you can get the truth, and you can come to the understanding that Jesus loves you so much and he wants you to come to him. Admit that you need him to save you because you cannot do it on your own. And Ask him to come into your heart and forgive you of all your sins. He will. If you do that, he will forgive you. If you really mean it truly in your heart and you have made that commitment to change your heart from the ways of the world to thinking more of the kingdom and of God, it will. It will change you. Many people think that it doesn't change you, but it does. True repentance, turning away from the world, turning away from that sin and not wanting to do it anymore. Change of heart. Because that's what's the beginning of you becoming the new, new creation. You have a different mindset. You don't think the same way anymore. doesn't mean that doesn't occasionally come in and everything to tempt you because it does. And anybody that says that it doesn't, they're lying to themselves. It does. We're all tempted. Jesus was tempted too. But he withstood and he rebuked it and he went away from it. He didn't give in to the temptation. That's what we have to do too. He gave us all the examples we need to live like him. And live the way he wants us to in the Bible. All you have to do is get in the word and read it. But any, any comments or anything you can leave in this section below. Uh, the video is getting long so I'm going to have to go ahead and cut it off for now. But I love all of you. God bless. And I hope at least one, one. I pray that one, at least one person gets something from this. And all the angels in heaven will rejoice if you come to know him, accept him, know that you need him, accept him, and confess, and come to Christ. All the angels in heaven will rejoice. I pray that you do. God bless. Good night.